issues facing our nation. Welcome to The Breakdown, KUJH's political news and analysis program. I'm Eric Pauls. And I'm Caitlin Dornbos. Civic Engagement and KU Leadership 2013 began this week with many on-campus opportunities to get involved in your community and government. Today, I'll speak with Civic Engagement and KU Leadership Council members Allison Cohn and Eric Hurt about a few of the upcoming events and, important, and the importance of young people playing active roles in their communities. Also, we will talk about a new marriage law in New Jersey, an update in the story of a controversial tweet from a KU journalism professor, and we will break down the botched rollout of Obamacare. But first, let's catch up on the latest political headlines. Kansas Democratic candidate for Governor Paul Davis announced Tuesday that he has selected Wichita businesswoman Jill Docking as his, as his running mate for Lieutenant Governor. The Davis Docking ticket will challenge current Governor Sam Brownback in the 2014 election. Now, what this means for you? In a Republican dominated state like Kansas, there is typically a dreary outlook for the Democratic Party. However, the addition of Docking could prove beneficial to the Davis campaign. Docking has already faced Brownback in an election. Um, in, 2000, er, in 1996, she lost a tight U.S. Senate race to Brownback. And the docking name is not unfamiliar to the governor's mansion. Jill Docking's father-in-law and grandfather-in-law both served as governors of Kansas in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. Also, in other Kansas election news, former Speaker of the House and former presidential candidate Newt Gingrich and his wife Callista announced that they will be in Johnson County on November 8th to endorse Senator Pat Roberts for re-election. New Jersey became the 14th state in the nation to allow same-sex marriage Monday after Governor Chris Christie dropped his legal opposition to the new legislation. He initially acted like he was going to challenge the law and then said that he would honor the decision of his state. And what this means is that Chris Christie could be among the first prominent Republicans to publicly embrace a state's right to decide on its own marriage laws. New, Jer new Jersey chose their law and it looks like the governor will respect it. If he decides to run for president, this will certainly be a hot-button topic in the Republican primary battle. Over half of young Republicans are polled as supporting same-sex marriage, and it looks like Governor Chris Christie may represent a new wave in the GOP simply in the fact that he does not seem to have any desire to actively oppose its legality. Now, the University of Kansas announced yesterday that Associate Professor of Journalism David Guth will not return to the classroom this year. Guth was put on administrative leave in, on September 20th after posting a Twitter comment about last month's Navy Yard shooting that caused nat national controversy. This decision ends Guth's administrative leave effective today. He will be doing administrative duties on campus, though he's not losing his job. Right. Uh, Provost Jeff Vitter made the decision, and Chancellor Bernadette Graylittle approved it. Guth also in issued an apology yesterday, saying that as a professional communicator, he should have been smarter. And what this means for you is that Guth was already going to be on a sabbatical next semester and would not have been in the classroom, so it will not affect KU Journalism students next semester. Gus's tweet last month sparked a lot of controversy, and it looks as though this decision should end the university's comments on this matter. Now, this Wednesday, Kansas legislators will be on campus at KU. After Guth's tweet, some lawmakers were calling for his resignation, and now with the university's decision to keep him, it could be an interesting conversation in regard to the budget to watch for next week. Now, moving on to today's big breakdown issue, the botched rollout of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. Now, I don't think anyone expected the first few days of the Obamacare rollout to be perfectly smooth and problem-free. However, I imagine very few in the Obama administration, and really in Congress, expected what would actually happen. Now, the website to sign up online, healthcare.gov, has had major technical malfunctions. Some of this is blamed on the administration using multiple contractors for different facets of the website that are not now compatible. Still, anytime something new is created in government or in life, there's going to be something wrong. When Medicare was rolled out, no one thought it would work. Now ask your grandma what she'd do without it. And others contribute the problems to the high volume of visitors to the website. However, some states have disputed this argument, saying that they have seen low numbers. Even some states saying less than 100 people have signed up for the program. Former White House Press Secretary for President Obama, Robert Gibbs, called it, quote, excruciatingly embarrassing for the White House. He said it was inconceivable that nobody in the Department of Health and Human Services, which oversees this program, knew of the problems because this is political and people are looking at who to blame. Now many are saying that the buck must stop with Health and Human Services Secretary and former Kansas Governor Kathleen Sebelius. As some Democrats call for a delay on Obamacare, which was one of the points in the recent government shutdown that Democrats did not like, Republicans are now calling for Sebelius' resignation. It isn't likely, however, that the President will request her res resignation. That would be uncharacteristic for him. 
but it would also lead to a tough nomination battle for whomever he would nominate to replace. You know, Eric, isn't it so nice that, you know, just last week the government was shut down because Republicans wanted to stop Obamacare, and now they're so concerned with it, with people not being able to have access to it. Well, that is ironic, and I think the, the other irony here is it's not only happening on one side, but as, as you know, Republicans inch closer and closer to this deal, one of the things that came up was that one-year delay, and, and the Democrats still did not want to do that. So now as Republicans act like they suddenly love this law and want it to happen, Democrats are also saying, well, maybe we should delay it for a year. So it seems like both parties, once this political hurdle was passed in the shutdown, have just given up their principles and are back to playing politics. Well, it is politics. That's exactly what it is. And I think that it's not that Republicans are all for Obamacare and they want it to work. Sure. I'm actually, I, I, I would bet that Republicans are likely to be glad that the health care roll has been kind of a failure. Well, and, and we'll see what happens. But I mean, as we both said, I'm sure it'll be more playing politics. So. Uh, what do you think will happen with all this after the initial reactions to the rollout pass? It, it could be anything from a delay to a resignation to a simple technical fix. So let us know your thoughts on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll be right back. That sounds awful, but a lot better than last week. We weren't born. Welcome back to The Breakdown, where we break down the big issues and bring them closer to campus. I'm Caitlin Dornboss. Civic engagement and KU leadership 2013 began Sunday with numerous events on campus encouraging young people to take action in their communities. From service projects to voter registration drives, KU students will have numerous opportunities to be civically engaged throughout the 11-day event, which ends October 31st. Here with me today are Civic Engagement and KU Leadership Council members Allison Cohn and Eric Hurt. Thanks for joining us. So let's talk a little bit about civic engagement. You know, oftentimes people say that young people, it's easy for them to be disengaged with their communities. So uh, why do you think it's important to be civically engaged as young people? Well, one of the biggest goals of this 11-day event is to really encourage um, participation in local events, encourage participation on campus, allowing students to know that there are opportunities for them to be civically engaged. You know, the voter registration, I think, is really important, letting them know that there are community service projects, there are ways for them to be involved politically, civically, just basically letting people know that there are opportunities for them and they're not, that their voices can be heard. Absolutely, and Eric, you were um, heading up the voter registration drives, is that correct? Definitely, and I think it's, it's very important to kind of bridge the gap between government and uh, them registering for, for voting because a lot of people uh, told me that they're very intimidated with the process but it's a very easy process and everybody's been pretty much happy about how it's going. Now can you take me through that process? I know um, after some of the voter reg registration laws have changed, um, can just any student sign up? Yeah, if you uh, live in Lawrence you're actually uh, uh, considered a resident of Kansas, so you can register here even if you're from another state as long as you live here. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, if it's your first time registering, you have to prove your U.S. citizenship. And Douglas County is very good at that. They send out letters. And actually, I turned in um, registration forms, and they sent out the letters like the next day. So they're very efficient. Now, how much uh, voter registration forms have you turned in so far? We have turned in, I think, approximately 146, which wow. is a very good number, seeing that it's an off year and not a presidential election. So Absolutely. So um, can you tell me about a couple other events that are going on with civic engagement? Definitely. Um, well, the committee, the planning committee for civic engagement and KU leadership, one of our biggest projects um, is in coordination with Make a Difference Day, and that's October 26th, so this coming Saturday. Um, throughout the rest of the month and throughout, um, throughout November, we are collecting money that will be used towards um, purchasing gloves and hats and other like warm weather necessities for local kids in Lawrence. Um, it will be also in coordination with the Harvesters Back Snack Program. So these are going to be gloves and hats and scarves that are going to, you know, the children that are most in need of these things, especially going into the winter. And, you know, they're going to need these things. And it's something, you know, kind of in, encourage participation on campus and let students know that they can, you know, help us out with this project as well. So we're trying to make it campus wide. Right, exactly. Uh, well, and that brings up an interesting point. You know, civic engagement, I think a lot of people just think that it's political, but um, it sounds like it can also be helping your community in general. Um, what do you think civic engagement um, 
means to you? Do you do it in your free time? <laughs> <laughs> well, in my free time, maybe in my free time, I'm usually like drinking coffee and maybe thinking about civic <laughs> engagement. Um, but I think that it's something that we can, you know, add to our daily lives. I think it's definitely much more than just playing party politics. I think it's a lot more than saying I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican. Um, I think it's really focused around giving back to your community and leaving it better than when you got there. And I think it's definitely about, um, you know, supporting others and supporting the other organizations in your communities and, you know, things like the Harvester's Back Snack Program and, you know, other different things on campus like Jubilee Cafe was one of the things that we are promoting with um, K leadership and Civic Engagement Week. Um, so I think it's all about just giving back to the community and you know m building communities and making it a better place to live. Absolutely. And um, the political side as well, it, it's easy for students not necessarily to know much about their government. I know the Dole Institute has a couple of events that are, um, along with KU leadership and civic engagement, uh, teaching people about their political process. How much uh, do you know about um, the political process? I know, Eric, you go to um, civic or the council meetings, the city council meetings, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Um, city council meetings are where a lot of the nuts and bolts kind of like city running is, is where it happens. Right. And a lot of people don't pay attention to it and it's sad because I feel like we pay more attention to the national government, but these city commission meetings are where things actually affect you like once they're enacted a lot quicker. And we have like the rental registration thing coming up and that's uh, an ordinance that's trying to ensure that a, a good representative sample of uh, Lawrence uh, real estate is safe for students and renters. Now, when is the city council meeting? They are every Tuesday at 6:35, and they're not. It's not going to be this Tuesday because this would be the fifth Tuesday, so it's every four Tuesdays. Okay, so a week from then. Yes, that's excellent. So maybe some students will check that out and be civically engaged in their communities. I wish you the best of luck with civic engagement and KU leadership 2013. Thanks for joining us, and we'll be right back. Three. Wow. I'm the greatest picture in the world. Yes. Optimism. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. And that's all for this week. We appreciate you tuning into the breakdown. Join us again next week for more political news and analysis at 11 a.m. on Friday. Remember to like us on Facebook at The Breakdown KJH and follow our tweets at Breakdown KJH. If you are interested in becoming a political correspondent for The Breakdown and you are a student at the university, send an email to breakdown.kujh at gmail.com. Also, tune in at 10 a.m. every day right here for KJH. Good morning, America. Good morning, KU. <laughs> and 6, and 6 p.m. on Tuesdays for Jayhawk Sports Report. I'm Caitlin Dornboss. And I'm Eric Pauls. See you next week when we break down the nation's big issues.